What's going on, everyone? So let's talk about Quincy Olivari because he was spectacular. Uh, so yesterday in the Laker game against the Golden State Warriors, the Lakers decided to basically sit everybody. There's all the G League guys, guys that are trying to make the roster, such as Quincy Olivari. Um, outside of Quincy, Bronny, I thought Bronny had a really nice game. Um, beyond that, I was really disappointed, right? Jalen Jafino, I thought this was a real opportunity to really kind of display what he was capable of, really show what he could do out there on the basketball court and just lay to dud. Um, Armel Traore, I do like his versatility, particularly on the defensive side. And guess he didn't shoot great. A couple of those shots were kind of just bailout shots, but he's a development guy. He was a development guy, an undrafted guy already, but his size and his defense, I mean, he was defending like Gary Payton Jr. And then switching on to like, uh, who was it, like pod and then defending uh, trace Jackson. And then he was like on buddy Hill at one point, like the dude was just everywhere. I really like his defensive versatility. Uh, Colin Caston, you can get rid of him. Maxwell Lewis, Looks like he's gotten worse. I, I, I don't really understand that. He plays like a guy that's trying to make the team rather than a guy that's already on the team and just letting the game come to him. It's incredibly frustrating at times. Uh, Castleton, if I was to like try to salvage Cash Castleton, I would play him at a four, not at the five, right? Like he just, he has the gifts, you know, playmaking, operator on there. He's just, he might as well be 5'10". Like he just he plays so small. It's it's crazy. But Quincy Olivari, right? He really stood out. He took the opportunity, took advantage of this moment. He had the game a couple nights ago, or like a week ago now, right? Uh people really wanted to see what he could do, see that level of consistency. And he got it. He got the opportunity tonight and he delivered. Right. I didn't like I wish that they would have went to him more in the second half. They like completely just went away from him in the second half. He only got like three shot attempts or something like that in the second half. Finished with 22 points. Uh, but I liked his ability to initiate the offense. I liked his ability to defend. And he was picking up full court, 94 feet, right? Like I liked his two-way play. I liked that he was a guy that you could see and, and envision playing alongside LeBron, playing alongside D'Lo, playing alongside... Uh, you know, Anthony Davis kind of using them, him playing off of them, being that guy coming off of pin downs, you know, catch, shoot three, stuff like that. Like you can see the potential that's there. He's more of a two guard than he is a point guard, right? Again, he's a guy that I would trust to initiate the offense and kind of get going. But if he's the guy that you're looking to kind of wheel and deal and get guys cooking and right, like, and, and just basically lay out the offense, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think he's there yet. I'm not saying he can't be at some point still 23 years old uh but he's not a guy that i would like really try like here here's the keys to the kingdom right now like he's not that but as your secondary playmaker as a guy that can kind of be the swing man but also knock down the open shot you know be a cutter right make plays pull up in the mid range we saw him get to the rim we saw him stop on a dime get the little floater going we saw him stop on a dime elevate shoot over the top in the mid-range you've seen his diversity on the, the on the offensive side of things and it really goes a long way problem is is the lakers could wave him and somebody else is going to pick him up i mean i would be shocked if he's makes it a day without being on a new roster as soon as he gets waved, somebody is going to grab him because he's just, he's shown all the things that you want. He's still 23, so there's still lots of room for growth and development, right? I don't think he's like going to be that superstar guy, but I also don't want to put a cap on him. You never know. But he doesn't have to be, right? Not everyone has to be a superstar. Not everyone has to be a top five player, right? You need guys like him. Guy that can, you know, if he could be a buddy healed type, that'd be perfect. Right, a guy that's just out there, you know, trying to get after it on the defense side, give me some serv for serviceable defense and be able to knock down the three ball with some consistency, put the ball on the deck and score a little bit for yourself, maybe make the occasional play for others. Perfect, right? It's all you need. It's all you'd be asking for, right? Guy coming off the bench, perfect. A1. Um, he's a guy you could see making an impact right now. And here's the thing. He did it against the Warriors team. He didn't do it against G League guys. He didn't do it against... You know, the you know the random guys that aren't even going to be in the NBA. He did it against their starters, and he did it against their, their high-end bench guys, the rotation guys, right? Like, that was something that I saw a lot of people, which to an extent I get, right? Where Dalton Connect, when he dropped, you know, 35, people were like, yeah, but he did it against a bunch of G League guys, did it? Well, half of those points he scored, well, all but 20 of them, right? He scored with the starters. He scored with 
the against the actual bench guys. You know, he just went off in that fourth quarter with like three and a half minutes left, or was it just under five, four minutes? I think it was like three fifty three or something like that. Um, so, and we've seen him be able to drop and be consistent in that. Well, you can't even question that with Quincy because he had nineteen at the half. Right? He, he literally had more than half of the Lakers' points at one point. Like, he was everything that you wanted to see. Like, he took this opportunity and ran with it. And you got to really credit him. You really got to you gotta just, you know, tip your hat to the young man. And But how do the Lakers keep him? Right? Because you don't want to lose him. And the Lakers can't lose. You got to keep him. So, you're not getting rid of Armel Traore. You just can't. He's way too versatile. He might end up being your best young talent. Like, seriously, I, like Dalton Connect looks like he could be special. Max Christie, I'm incredibly high on long term. He's still like Max Christie, what, 21? Right? He still has a lot of room and growth. But like Armel Traore could be a, a, an OG version, right? I'm not saying he'll be as good as OG, but like he has similar size, the ability to play three through five, right? But also defend one through five. And then. You know, if he can just develop that three-point shot, which his shot doesn't look terrible, looks like a guy that, that you know, a little development kind of go a long way. Uh, I really like, you can't get rid of him. So it really boils down to Colin Kaufston or Christian Coloco. Now, I really like the idea of Christian Coloco. I was stoked when the Lakers brought him on, on a two-way. However, he still hasn't been cleared yet. And we have no idea if and when or if ever He's going to be cleared, which is incredibly odd because, like, th- his personal doctors, the team doctors, the NBA doctors, like, everybody has said he's good, he's cleared, he's fine, he can play, and the NBA just has not agreed to sign off on him yet. And it's like, like what is going on here? It's just it's incredibly odd that we don't have an answer on Coloco. So if I'm the Lakers, I am calling first thing in the morning, I'm asking, like, hey, what are we doing here? Like, what, what's happening, right? Like, because we don't want to just, like, have Coloco on a two-way just to have him on a two-way. Like, we want him on a two-way because we, we want to start developing him. We want him to be on actual court action. We want to get him some opportunities at actual in-game minutes, right? Like, are, 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 is he cleared or is he not? Like, what are your intentions? Do you plan on it? Like, are you ever going to do it? Not Assuming that they don't know, right? Maybe they already know. Maybe, you know, the NBA is like, hey, just start, like, you know, two days before the season starts, we'll do it. I don't know, but... As of right now, it's like we just we have no clue, we have no idea at all about what's going on with Coloco. So to me, if you don't have an answer and it's unknown, you might as well just wave him, right? Like, cause again, like I, I like the idea of him. I think he can come in and be that shot blocker and help rebound. He's still a development guy. I mean, he was a development guy before he missed a year and a half. But I do like what he can provide. But if if he can't, if you don't even know if he's gonna play this year. I'd rather have Colin Castleton, who you know can at least, if you know, break glass in case of emergency, he can step in and play. I right? hopefully it never comes to that, but he can in spots. Or if a guy gets the night off, whatever, he can step in, play a backup role, or be your third big or whatever, right? Like things like that. Um, otherwise, if Coloco, if they're like, hey, we're, we're gonna sign Coloco, then you gotta get rid of Castleton. Again, I like Castleton. I like his abilities. I mean, that guy, he can do a little bit of everything out there. But he just, he he, he plays so timid. He plays like like he's almost afraid to be out there at times. And it's just, it, it's so frustrating watching him play basketball. Because it's just like, dude, can, can, you, can you be a little more physical? Can you be a little more aggressive? You, remember, you're, you're 6'11", 250, not 5'11", 250, 150, right? Like, can you... Can you muscle your way through a little bit? So I just, I think if it's me, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to find out what's going on with Coloco. If not, then again, like you got to get rid of him. Maybe you get rid of both, right? A lot of people want to see uh, Jamarian Sharp, who just got waived by the Dallas Mavericks. I'll talk about him at some point. Um, I'll probably do a video on AIS, the Lakers show. So look out for that. Probably do it on the other Lakers channel. Um, so that way this video can marinate a little bit and, you know, when you're done with this video, you can go check out that video on that channel. But, um, yeah, like he's seven five guy that, you know, could potentially provide that same rim protection, help with some rebounding stuff. He's a development guy, too. He needs real development, very raw. Uh, but 
He's a guy that, okay, like maybe that's what you're doing. You're kind of bringing him in and bringing in Quincy and get rid of Castleton and, and Coloco. I prefer Coloco over everybody. Like if we have, like if our three two-way guys are like Quincy, Coloco, and Traore, beautiful. But you got to you gotta keep Quincy. And then that doesn't mean he won't be on. Like if the Lakers pull off a trade or something, then boom, you can just bring Quincy right in and boom, there you go, right? Like it, it, it's perfect for everybody. So, but you got to at least be able to keep him under the Lakers banner. Now you got to be able to at least have him locked up so no one else can come in and swoop on him and take him. You need to have it to where like, okay, he's he's at least under the Lakers control. And then, you know, if, if you pull a trade off at some point or something happens, boom, now you can bring him in on the roster and he can actually play a role. But in the meantime, he can play 50 games or whatever it is. That's ideally what, what you'd be looking to do. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Uh, do you like what you saw from Quincy Olivari? Do you think like, yes, you have to do whatever it takes. Keep Quincy. Do not get rid of him. Do you think, no, it's, it's fine. Like, you know, he's just another guy. Another question, like another argument, I guess, against it is like, where does he play? Right, he's not playing over D'Lo. He's not playing over Reeves. He's not playing over Max Christie. He's not playing over uh, Dalton Connect. He's not playing over, you know, uh, Gabe Vincent. I, I, I'm not saying he won't ever play. I'm not saying he won't get minutes. But like consistency wise, I mean, I can understand the argument. But to me personally, I, you got to You got to keep him. You got to you, you cannot lose him. You got to keep him at least on a two way. Let him get spots. You know, D'Lo gets the night off. Boom, bringing in Quincy. Let like let's see what he can do. Uh, you know, Reeves gets the night off, same thing. Let's see what he can do. Connect gets the night off, boom. Quincy, bring him in, let's see what he can do. All right, just give him that opportunity. But again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it, let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out, helps me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button, throw on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.